so the, the other aspect of water that we have to think about besides the, um, you know, just the, the sheer values of it or, or the sheer amounts of it are the quality. So you guys probably saw this out of the green chemistry theory in practice that uh, you don't really need much of uh, toxic substances to pollute very large amounts of water. So, you know, huge problem with like uh, dripping oil from cars and things. If it gets into water supplies, you can essentially ruin very large amounts of water very quickly. And this is a, a big problem for a lot of chemical manufacturers that just a little bit of byproduct can uh, ruin uh, water streams for communities and, and large parts of the country. Uh, in the United States, we have pretty good numbers on aqueous waste from the toxic release inventory. Hazardous waste is um, not a, a huge piece of the pie, but it's pretty substantial. I mean, it's 675 million tons per year, so there's a, a lot of hazardous uh, wastewater being generated. And, uh, you know, to, for the most part, a lot of basic chemicals are dealt with in water treatment systems, but a lot, we're increasingly finding that a lot are not. If you go looking for more chemicals, you, you often find them. So the U.S. Geological Survey did this survey of um, water supplies and, and natural uh, sources in the United States a couple years ago, and they were finding something like 80 percent of the sites that they looked at were containing these different chemicals. Uh, so you know, DEET and, and, and bug spray, bisphenol A, got flame retardants, all kinds of things. Um, not all of this is coming from runoff. Uh, a lot of these follow-up research has shown that these things just get through waste treatment plants because a lot of these chemicals were not around when the waste treatment plant technology was devised. And so we're kind of uh, running experiments on ourselves that uh, basically humans and other animals and ecosystems are serving as the the filters for these, these uh, waste streams. So I just touched on that. I mean, you can have point contamination of water. I mean, this is kind of the obvious thing. If you see like a you know, sewer pipe spewing nasty water, that's a point contamination. But then there's also things like uh, agricultural runoff, um, leaking of septic tanks and, and sewer systems and mine drainage. And how this ties back into energy is that if you're able to capture these um, waste sources, the main way of dealing with them is typically some sort of chemical process. So uh, given that we're all, you know, in, in an oxidizing environment, you know, we're in oxygen, pretty much the way to deal with aqueous pollutants is to try and oxidize them. And a lot of waste treatment plants and processes are trying to basically combust the chemicals in water, so kind of fire and water. Uh, all the carbon is going to go to CO2, ideally. Hydrogen and oxygen would go to water, and then you'd end up with these same kind of um, nitrogen and sulfur oxides that you might see from burning something in an engine. And so you have a lot of choices in what types of chemicals would get used in, that, in those processes, and all of these, again, will have different energy impacts. So treating the water, you're going to be choosing between things like chlorine, you're going to be choosing between um, ozone, maybe ozone at different pHs, ozone with catalysts, UV ra radiation takes energy to generate UV light, hydrogen peroxide, it's going to take energy to produce hydrogen peroxide. Um, the producing the catalyst, TiO2 is one of the most common catalysts, so extracting TiO2, getting it, or extracting titanium, converting it to TiO2, and getting it in a form that can be used in these plants. All these things are going to be contributing to energy. And so again, we keep seeing this this energy nexus that um, there you, you find trade-offs. So chlorine and ozone are probably two of the most common water treatment chemicals. Uh, chlorine actually has a lower embedded energy burden than ozone, but on the other hand, chlorine is potentially more likely to generate toxic byproducts. So um, some of the, the supplemental readings we've given are about things like when chlorine reacts with the organic chemicals, it doesn't always convert the carbon to CO2, it converts them to carbon-chlorine bonds, and then you end up with organochlorine chemicals that uh, sometimes are worse than the original compound, sometimes they accumulate in, uh, in animals. And so these are the kind of questions that have to get asked when, you're, when uh, a chemical process is generating aqueous waste. You have to start thinking about how is it going to get treated, how much water is it potentially going to affect, where is that water going to go? and 
is it going to take a lot of energy to deal with that water?